All right, we're back with more Rezi review content from Chibi. This is for episode five, finding out who killed Subaru. Now we know, but hey, let's see what Chibi has to say. Yo. Subaru just... Yeah. He just got fucked. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Arm cut off, eye out. Oh my God. That yeah. Was, that was horrific. That was a horrific, horrific ending segment of this episode. Like, of all the things so far from ReZero, I think this was one of the most gruesome parts. Not because of... Gruesome parts? If you define gruesome as in some sort of gore, then I'd say that Elsa fucking up Subaru was more gruesome, especially how she taunted the guts after. But in terms of, like, the absolute terror and fear, I don't know. Like, the voice acting, the sheer realization that he got his arm cut off, that was crazy. So maybe it was more gruesome here. The gore. But because of how it was done. Definitely that entire ending segment, like, yeah. after the ending song, which I'll get into everything else in a part of this episode, like the ending song and stuff. But everything after that ending song, whoever worked on that scene, they they have some talent. They have some really good talent. Because the camera angles were way better than anything so far from this series. But Fuck the camera angles, man. All they showed me was a leg of a table. I'm trying to figure out what character did it, but obviously it's not trying to show it right. It was pretty good at outro. Also, the way it was used to build up that tension... Mm. But also, when you saw his desperate cry for help as he was puking his yeah. guts out. The, like, the angles through the windows to the scene when he was laying on the ground, when he was going up the stairs, just yep. all of these different camera angles. And the eyeball it rolling really out. built that scene properly. Now, I'm stunned, because that entire scene was probably one of the best sequences, or I guess segments, of this anime season I've seen. Like, I'm not counting JoJo, and I'm not counting Boku no Hero Academia, because I expect okay. the series to be really good. But, in terms of everything else, ReZero, that segment right there is definitely in the top moments of this season. Because, the, the team that worked on that part alone really put in a lot of effort to showcase how ReZero can be brutal and what to expect from the rest of the series. And it wasn't just brutal to be brutal like some manga do. For instance, they go off killing everybody, cutting people's heads off and shit, and that's just GG, and you see blood scatter everywhere. But it wasn't really all about the gore. It was. It's just like, again, arm getting cut off, head being splattered. Like, this isn't unique to ReZero. Right? I've seen much more limbs and, you know, damage being done to the body in different anime, but I didn't feel the same level of, like, terror. Because it was just like, Subaru just like puking and going cold and walking out. And then something happens, you hear this metal sound dragging. And then you just, a clash happens, and it's like, what the fuck just happened? We don't know, everything is still distorted and dark. And then we see an arm on the chandelier, and it's just like, oh my fucking god. And then the scream as he realizes the arm is cut off. And then later on, just like a fucking splatter of the head with the eyeball rolling out. The gore, the damage being done is not as severe as some of the other shit that I've seen in anime. But the way it was presented made it seem a lot more scary and terrifying. Actually more of setting the tone of the episode or the series. Because Saru... He's sitting here the entire episode. He's retracing his steps of what he did in the previous episode. He's doing everything he possibly can mm -hmm. to make sure he goes down the exact same path that he did in the last time he did this. And so he wants to see exactly what's going to happen. So he kind of assumed he was he might die, but he was going to try to stop it. He, of course, no man wants to die, but he was going to try to stop it. So he tackled it head on. And if this is going to be taken as if, you know, it's a different playthrough or like a different checkpoint, like a new spawn... Usually, if you're playing a game, you will die over and over to learn something. Like, Dark Souls. Dark Souls is a perfect example. You go up against a boss, you fight that boss, you fucking die usually most. 
Yep, and I think Betty is the bonfire. The time, but till you learn the move set of that boss, and then you can win. And that's kind of what Subaru was doing in this episode. He was retracing his steps, doing everything he did, but then learning from his experiences. Like, if he knows what's going to happen, he should be able to counter what is going to happen. But that, that was the big mind fuck with this episode because it wasn't a person or, or actually there probably was a person that attacked okay, him, but okay. from our viewpoint as the anime only we don't know because like his arm got split the eyeball rolled out we hear metal clinking but we see nothing else we don't see a weapon we hear no voice we don't see a character i haven't read the original source but as anime only's you don't know what the fuck is going on. Obviously, some form of magic or something is going on, but we don't really know what is going on. Now, the easiest choice here, looking at everything, it, it looks like the dog might have made... I'm telling you, bro, rabies. I am so down with the dog theory too, Chibi. That piece of shit bit Subaru, then he started to puke and get all cold. First time we don't know shit because we were sleeping. And what's really interesting is the next episode... Obviously now, we're all more episode ahead whenever we read these reviews. Rem is the culprit. But in that run, we didn't get bitten by a dog. And he didn't have those symptoms of being cold and shivering. Which makes me think it's the fucking rabies, bro. But memes aside, the night was also not as dark. Right? Because every time Subaru, at least in the second run, when he got all cold and shivered and puked, it was pitch black. By the outro of episode 6 or uh, yeah, episode 6 when Rem comes out of the forest, it's not that dark yet. So if we're going to assume that shit is going to happen uh, like a, a couple hours later, then okay, maybe it's not the dog. But I'm working with what I got right now, okay? Subaru sick where he was vomiting. Now that, that's the obvious choice or the answer to this outcome of this episode. Because you had it to where right before Subaru started feeling nauseous and started Man, that puking. And fucker then, bit you know, him. He was asking for help and all that. And then he had limbs cut off and stuff, which I'll get into that scene in a second. But I, it makes us assume that maybe the dog bite is yes. what got him sick. Yes. And why he was puking. And I'm so was down. Something completely different that was killing him later on in that scene. But I don't believe so. Because if we retrace, I don't think it's what killed him. Maybe it is the thing that killed him in episode in, in the first run. But in the second run, it was not that what killed him. It was the weapon. Face our steps. If this is from a person and someone casted magic or something on Subaru, it makes me assume maybe the reason why Subaru died to begin with, like why he died in the previous run, okay. is probably because when he was choked sleeping? to death on his own puke. I will choke to death on his own puke. Yeah, I could see that. Because, like, again, everything is being very obscured. First night, we don't know anything. Second night, he gets sick, and then a weapon kills him. But if we're going to assume that he was going to get sick regardless in the first night, because he also visited the village and got bitten by a dog, which was directly mentioned, I, I could totally see that. Or a weapon hit us at night. Like we were sleeping. Maybe we were still, you know, getting shivers and cold. And then the same weapon showed up and killed him at nighttime too, right? That, that could have also happened. And another crazy thing is... Because Rem and Ram are twins, and if Rem has that one sort of weapon, I'm going to assume Ram also uses the same weapon. So it's just like, in night two, was it Ram or Rem? I don't know. Don't spoil me. I'm willing to bet it, because I mean, if he was laying backwards like he was doing, and he passed out, and he was getting tired, like you saw throughout the entire sequence, that he Death was getting very, puke. very tired. Like, it seemed like he was having a really rough time staying awake. He was like this. He was, like, dozing off, trying to fight sleep. And, like, he was really wide awake. He was wide awake, but then all of a sudden, it just, he, he starts doing this. He's getting tired. And then, all of a sudden, he starts puking. So, it made me assume that he choked on his own vomit. I like, could it, see when that. When he went to sleep, and maybe someone casted some sleep spell or something on him, and when he puked in his sleep, and he died. And it didn't require necessary violence and gore like we saw in this episode. Sure, that could have happened. Or the violence and gore could have also happened in our sleep. Nobody really knows for sure yet. So it was kind of like a little bit different because he kind of fought back. So probably the killer, whoever tried to make him sick, if it wasn't the dog, had to finish him off because he was calling for help. Because honestly, maybe he wouldn't have died if he would have just continuously puked. I mean, it would have made him dehydrated, but maybe he could have found someone in time to save him. But because he was getting closer and closer to finding someone, they finished him off. The question is, who killed him? Because we know someone had to kill him. So we yeah. Know. Sliced his fucking arm off. And that's the craziest thing is because we know that it's Rem in episode 6, which is the third run. But it doesn't necessarily mean it was Rem in the second run. It's just because the weapon is choice the same doesn't really conclude it. It's quite likely that it was Rem in the second run. 
but I'm just going to assume that Ram also has a similar weapon, then it could have been Ram as well. It's just weird that right, we had such a good run with Ram on the second run. The affection was all there. We went on a date. She smiled. Uh, and she still killed us? Maybe. On the third time, though, the most recent episode we watched in episode 6, we didn't interact with Rem at all, and she was very, you know, uh, not intimate with us at all. And even, like, the second run, there were points where, remember, she made the excuse of, I'm just staring at you because I want to fix your hair, the haircut stuff, but maybe it's just all a lie. And it was Rem both times, and I'm getting, you know, baited by that smile that we saw in episode 5. And it fell into a damn cup. That, that shit was... Damn, the, the angle of that when he looks up and yeah, he the sees arm. his arm in a fucking cup. Oh, oh, oh my god, dude. Oh my god. That scene was so gruesome. Like, he, he didn't even realize. And that's like how pain works. I mean, there, there's been examples in news stories and stuff where someone will have their entire hand just completely fucking chopped off. And then... It's okay, first of all, my Twitch chat is not a place for you fucking retards to have a little fucking conversation. Second of all, turn whispers off. No reason should there be any of you whispering to each other. That's a fucking liability. You are all anonymous motherfuckers that shouldn't trust each other. If you want to fucking talk, go do it somewhere else. Just shut the fuck up and talk about the fucking video we're watching. You're being disruptive and you're fucking annoying. They're, they're, there's blood squirting out and shit, but they're like... They don't feel it they, they, because there's so much adrenaline and shit pumping through. They don't feel it. But then they look down like, holy fuck, my arm is gone. And they start feeling pain. And that's what I think happened to Subaru. He was so much, he had so much pressure on him. He was puking everywhere. And when he got hit, he wasn't even realizing what was going on. His adrenaline was pumping because he wanted to survive. And then he looks up and he sees his arm. He's like, holy fuck, it's gone. And then you hear a skull bone crushing sound at the end of the episode. episode yes, over. his head. Like, Yo. That's some brutal shit. So. And then he wakes up sh just in shock, screaming the next episode. Just terrifies both Rem and Ram, which is probably even more suspicious. But that is that was a fucking gruesome death. More than Elsa, though, with the gut scene. It was nice, though, because Elsa, like, guided us to death by, like, <laughs> whispering dirty, disturbing things into our ear. What killed him? Well, obvious answer is the dog. I don't believe it's the dog. So, magic. Magic. No, I still want to go with the dog. I like the puke theory. I, I, no, he got fucking rabies from the dog. I'm still sticking with that. It's something that we do know exists in this series. We've seen it. We've seen examples of this. So it's not off the table that there's supernatural going on here. We do know that there's different creatures other than humans in this series. Next episode, they did mention shamanism, which is a subset off of magic and spirit art, which is used in the northern continents. Those were curses mentioned by Betty when we were asking Betty. So what Chibi is alluding to here could be those curses. Now, one thing to really point out that this episode tried to imply was that the maids, the maid sisters might be demons because you had it to wear super. I don't think they're demons. They're Onis, right? It was the whole Oni talk. Ogres, Onis. To point out that this episode tried to imply was that the maids, the maid sisters might be demons because you had it to where Subaru, he was talking to one of the sisters, the blue haired one, and was like, oh, I like demons. You know, they're willing to have a laugh with you and all that, but you know, gods don't really do. It's just a poor translation of subs, right? We hear Oni. Demons is like more like ma something. Majin? I don't know. But Oni, more Oni. Do that. So it's implying that the way she smiled, that she might be something... But the demonically possessed is a thing, right? Oh, you're demonically possessed like an Oni. Doesn't mean that you're a demon, but it was demonically possessed. It wasn't Oni-esque possessed. Along the lines of a demon, maybe a suck... Yeah, Chibi also said Jealous Witch, so the versions that he's watching is extremely botched. Like, Jealous Witch is actually unforgivable simply due to the Seven Deadly Sins theme. Of jealousy not being the same thing as envy. This maybe a demon, something, it, just something similar to a demon, something unhuman. So this kind of clarifies that these maids might have some form of magical abilities. For so sure. So it's making us assume it might be them too causing it. Because as you yes, know, in the last maybe. episode, I don't know, it maybe like they might have been doing something. But I don't believe that is the case. It might be something else going on here. I mean, it could be them. I have no idea. Because I think there's um there's many different things involved. It's not just one single thing happening. Because throughout majority the episode it seemed like they were rather nice they were getting along well they seemed like everything was completely fine i mean subaru was learning they went out of their way to teach him reading and writing which is the segment i want to talk about actually because i talked about this briefly in one of my main parts of my last okay. review of re-zero 
Subaru, he, as I said, he has access to a very strong library compared to anyone else. He can look up forbidden magic that no one else knows about. Fuck it, he could ask Roswell to teach him as well, but we're not ever gonna do that shit, are we? And since in this episode he was learning how to read and write, and we know he can carry his memories from his previous life, we know he can use that to his advantage to continuously learn how to read and write, and be able to eventually read those complicated books. Because, I mean, like I've said, this man has pretty much infinite time on his hands. From our understanding, he can die over and over as many times as he wants. He just needs to figure out how to get the fuck out of it. So, we don't know exactly the limits to his ability of how he constantly resets to a spawn point or a checkpoint or whatever. So, the main thing is, is like, now since he has so much time on his hands, he can learn every situation, but also he can use this to learn. Learn magic. And then he can use magic in upcoming shit like this. Like, what if he would have, like... I don't think he can even use magic because his gaze not even, like, working. Like, has he even used magic? Does he even show potential? I mean, maybe he can use spirit arts, but I feel like a regular human like him is not going to have the same level of gates that exist in, like, the people in this show. Like, let's say, a magical dispel or something, or a barrier. He could put up a fucking barrier and it would stop his arm from being flung off, or maybe he had a dispel to stop him from puking. There there's many things here. So, with him... I just wish that we could just ask Roswell to learn from the greatest magical user of the continent, man. Learning the ability to read and write, it makes it more likely that he will go into that library since he can find it to be able to read those books. And I feel like Beatrice is the missing link here. I, I yeah. feel like she is because okay. the way she acted in this episode, there was one Not even this episode, last episode too. There was, maybe it was this episode where Beatrice says, I suppose that has nothing to do with me implying whatever's happened to Subaru, which is already planned by Roswell. She's looking the other way. One thing that was really off, she didn't have many lines in this episode, but her personality was very different from how it was kind of shown in the previous episode. For instance, Beatrice was very mean, aggressive, okay? And <laughs> Subaru wasn't the best, obviously, towards her, but... She was aggressive, but in this episode, he walks up, and she kind of is a little bit passive towards him. I mean, she's a little bit mean, passive-aggressive, but overall, it was a lot more nicer than how it was in the previous episode. Well, it was like that, because Subaru called her a fucking drill lolly NPC and was rude, right? And who knows what Beatrice is? Probably some mythical being that demands a lot of respect, and a random dude shows up talking shit. I could totally understand why she got pissed off and did that. But then afterwards, Subaru, you know, start to be a little bit more appropriate, a little bit more respectful. In fact, Beatrice was the bonfire, if we're going to use the Reaser, uh, sorry, Dark Souls example in episode 5, when he is shocked that... Sorry, sorry, that's next episode. I'm getting ahead of myself. Next episode is the Beatrice address one where... Well, it's this one too, isn't it? Yeah, no, episode 5 is the one where he actually did cry. Episode, episode 6 is when it's... <laughs> it, it, it's like, it, it's totally different, but like... Yes, Beatrice... Already no Subaru, so even though the runs failed, there's at least somebody that still remembers him and it kind of offers him stability and mentality. And then there was a scene that was very quick, but it definitely had some form of weight to this episode. She looks out the window, looks at our main character, and then doesn't really say nothing, but she looks at, you know, Puck, and you're like, okay, so that's pretty much it. So, I feel like Beatrice, she might be the mi missing link here. Either A, she's the one causing this, and she's the one probably killing the main character. She's the one killing the main character. Well, we know that she doesn't use that weapon, because she's a magic user. But, it maybe instead of the rabies, it's Beatrice using a curse on Subaru? Using the logic of Beatrice and Bed and Puck are the only ones that can use the curse, right? And that's what the curse is, make him sick? I don't know. I don't think it's Beatrice. I think it's simply... I, I, I want to stick with the dog rabies theory. But then beyond that is simply the maid's killing. And I don't know if it was Ram or Rem in the second run. Because of the similarity weapons. Even though everything seems to be pointing at Rem right now. Or B, she knows what's going on. One or the other. She definitely knows what's going on. Because she's turned a blind eye and implicitly said... No, explicitly said... I suppose that has nothing to do with me. Because she is a mythical, uh, a mythical beast or something. Something that is magical. We know she's not human. She's, she's definitely some sort of spiritual thing. It's my still assumption due to her relationship with Puck. Probably a vampire or something. So... Vampire lolly. Yeah, I mean, usually most lollies are vampires. I could see that. She might have the answer to this. And if Subaru breaks down and says something, maybe she will understand. Who knows? I, I feel like she's going to be very helpful in the future events of the series. Since she has access to the library, 
Now, overall, though, talking about the other segments of this episode, we have some beautiful moments, comedy moments. I mean, Subaru learning from his mistakes from the previous episode, taking it to use it to his advantage. He's taking the skills he learned from the maid. Still can't cut a goddamn potato without cutting himself. To his advantage to be even better in this, but he was still rather clumsy. And there was some very subtle differences, especially when it came to uh, sewing and stuff like that. But overall, he pretty much did the exact same thing he did in the previous episode, but from a different angle. It mainly focused on giving more characterization to Rim. Hopefully that's her right name. Giving yep. more characterization Blue to girl. her and allow us, uh, allowing us to know more about her personality. So yeah, tell me your thoughts in the comments below. How do you all feel about this week's I'm feeling amazing about these ReZero episodes. And please, go to Chibi's channel. Give him a like, sub to his channel if you haven't. And again, one of the... Again, like, I obviously know that it's Rem that's killing, right? We see her at the end of episode 6, but I'm just saying, what if there's a possibility that simply due to the similarity in weapons that Night 2 wasn't actually Rem but Ram? I don't know. It's always fun to at least think about different possibilities. See you on the next one.